All right, good morning, Hunter Hills family, as we've got some people coming through the doors. It is a, uh, it is a great, beautiful morning to be together, worshiping uh, as a family together, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, if, you are, if you are a guest here this morning, we are so glad that you're here with us, uh, and, and we are uh, blessed by you being here, and we hope that this morning is also a blessing to you. So we, we have a few things coming up in our church family uh, that are really important and exciting. Uh, first, we've got uh, buddy training. So buddy training, this is for our gifted ministry for families with special needs children. Uh, and so uh, buddies are people who help assist uh, our special needs uh, members and guests. Uh, you, you remain with uh, the special needs guest uh, during class time, uh, during the, the worship service, and you help assist them and, and you're with them during that time. And so if you're interested in being a buddy, over the next three weeks, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th, there is going to be buddy training uh, during the class time at 9.30 a.m., and I believe you only have to go to one of those for training. Is that correct, Dean? Just one training? Do, all three weeks. I was so wrong. All three weeks. Sometimes being wrong helps it plant it in people's memories even more. Remember when Stephen was so wrong about that? It's actually three. So that's going to be three uh, go to all three, the 7th, the 14th, no, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th at 9.30 a.m., and you can speak to Dean Ferris more if you would like to, more information. Uh, Camp, Camp Refuge uh, is going to be July 21st through the 26th. If you want to be a, sta uh, a part of the staff for that camp, uh, the last day to register for the staff is today. Uh, so again, those dates are July 21st through the 26th. The camp is for first through 10th graders. Um, so again, the last day to apply as staff is today, and registration for campers will be opening soon. So if you have a first through 10th grader, uh, this will be a great week of camp uh, for them to be involved in. That registration will be coming soon. Next week, a week from today, April 14th, Will and I uh, will be hosting another Q&A. Uh, if you have any skeptic friends, we would love for them to come. But also, if you just have any general questions uh, about church or about the Bible, uh, please uh, come and talk with me and Will about that. Last month, we had a really great time together. That's going to be in the room right behind me, uh, in the audit right behind the auditorium. And so we'll host that right after the service concludes, Sunday, April 14th. Another important thing is going on next week as well. That is going to be our Mission Sunday. So uh, that's when we take special contributions that go to the many mission efforts that this church is involved in. Today, you're going to hear about two more of those missions. We'll hear about the Honduras mission and about the prison ministry that Carl leads. And so we're really excited about this opportunity to, to give to so many local missions. Uh, so again, next week, uh, that's what will be happening. There are some brochures if you want to see more information and more ministries that we support. Those brochures are out at the welcome desk in the lobby. And so you can see all of the information uh, that will be for our Mission Sunday taking place next week. Thanks, everyone. Worship is our response to what we're thinking about God. Sometimes the things we think about God are very positive, very encouraging things. Like in Romans 11, 33, the first half of the verse. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Sometimes the things we're thinking about God are things that draw us to a sense of awe, maybe even fear, like in the second half of that same verse. How unsearchable are his judgments and his paths are beyond our understanding. So today as we're worshiping, be thinking about what you're thinking about God as we're singing these songs, as we're reading from scripture, as we're listening to the lesson from scripture. Identify what you're thinking about God. 
And as you're doing that, it may evoke thoughts of praise. God's been very good to you, and you want to praise God for that. Uh, it may evoke thoughts of supplication. There may be someone that you love that you're caring about, and they have a need. It may be thoughts of petition where you need to ask God for something. So to help you act on those thoughts, you'll notice on the back side of a chair near you, a little card like this in a handy dandy clear container with a pen there at it. These are welcome cards on one side and prayer cards on the other side. Uh, we have a group of people that believe in the mighty power of prayer and they're concerned about the things you're concerned about. So if during worship you have a thought of something, a thought of praise, a thought of petition, a thought of supplication, write it down on the back of this card and as you're leaving, drop it in the little blue box. And I promise you, this week, several people will join you in prayer for your concerns. Let's pray as we begin worship now. Fathers, we're here to worship you today. We are just in awe of how great and how awesome and how mighty and how feared to be that you are. Father, please accept our worship today through your Son. Amen. Amen. I hope. Am I on? Yeah. I am? I can feel like, but you have natural ways. Okay. Test one, two, three. Hey. <laughs> he, he had to change the settings to when Corey's talking, then when Corey's singing. They're different, they're different volumes. It's weird. Um, I hope you're ready to worship this morning. Uh, I, I'm excited. I, I don't know if y'all noticed, it is a beautiful day outside. Uh, and, and, but it's also a beautiful day to be in here together. Uh, yeah, obviously, if you look around, a few, few more empty seats than we had last week. Um, I also understand that, you know, you get guests from out of town, families coming in. I mean, I, I, I realize, I mean, we had, to, we had to put more chairs in here last week. It was such an incredible time of worship, a time of uh, togetherness. And, I, and I, will, I will confess, it's so easy to get hyped up for Easter Sunday. Because the worship's really good. But you know what my favorite part about the Easter story is? Is he didn't go back in the tomb. He's still risen. And so today, like last week, we get to worship the risen Savior. So let's stand up this morning and sing together. Jesus, hope of the nations, Jesus, comfort for all who mourn. You are the source of heaven's hope on earth. Jesus, light in the darkness, Jesus, truth in each circumstance. You are the source of heaven's light on earth. In history you lived and died, you broke the chains, you rose to life. You are the hope living in us, you are the rock in whom we trust. You are the light shining for all the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear. Our Prince of Peace drawing us near. Jesus, our hope, living for all who will receive. You are the hope living in us. You are the rock in whom we trust. You are the light shining for all the world to see. You rose from the dead, conquering fear. Our Prince of Peace drawing us near. Jesus, our hope, living for all who will receive. Lord, we believe. Lord, we In Jesus, our Savior and King, 
We believe in the kingdom of heaven, and we will sing, we will sing. This is the day we'll declare it, Jesus whose power made us free. And your light will shine out in the darkness, so all will see. All will see, we believe in you, believe in you, you have shown us your glory, shown us your grace, we believe in you, believe in you, you are mighty now to save. When Jesus appears in his glory and everything broken renewed, every heart will be humbled in reverence and we will sing, we will sing. We believe in you, believe in you, you have shown us your glory. Your grace, we believe in you, believe in you. You are mighty now to save. We believe in you, believe in you. You have shown us your glory, shown us your grace. We believe. There is an endless song, echoes in my soul, I hear the music ring, and though the storms may come, I am holding on, and to the rock I cling, how can I keep from singing? your praise how can i ever say enough how amazing is your love how can i keep from shouting your name i know i am loved by the king and it makes my heart want to sing i will lift my in the darkest night, for I know my Savior lives, and I will walk with you, knowing you'll see me through, and sing the songs you give. How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart. How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart. I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart want to see. Came sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing. 
Jesus Messiah, the name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from Messiah, Lord of all, His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, the name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, all our hope is in you, all our hope is in you, all the glory to you, God, the light of the Messiah, the name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Amen. You can have a seat. So I uh, just want to give everybody an update, uh, you know, as we draw near to the, um, the the Mission Sunday, and I know everybody's kind of going over the different ministries, and so I'll lead the Honduras ministry. Um, and so just wanted to, uh, I guess a, a lot of folks know we, we do a Honduras ministry, but not sure if everybody knows kind of what, what all that entails. Uh, so just wanted to kind of give everyone an update there. Um, on kind of the, the four different areas we focus on. Uh, one thing we do that's unique there uh, that I, no other churches uh, of any kind are doing in that region um, is our resource center. Um, so our resource center is, is basically, uh, we rent out uh, a building and it is stocked with uh, children's uh, Bible class material um, because Many congregations uh, in a place where, you know, minimum wage is around $300 uh, a month uh, don't have the money to actually buy children's material, coloring books and, um, you know, kids' Bibles and such uh, for, for their local congregations. So what we do is we help kind of keep that stocked. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, a copy machine there. We got internet there, so they can come there, and, and essentially anybody from any congregation, Church of Christ, any Baptist, any kind of church can go there, and they can. we let them make copies of the material there. Um, so any kind of pages, any books that we have there, they can make copies so that they have enough material that Sunday to be able to teach their kids. Um, so that's one unique thing we're doing there. Another thing we're doing as well is... Um, some of the ladies in the church who help run that resource center, um, we're actually paying for them to get uh, counseling classes. 
Um, now, it may not seem revolutionary, but it, you know, here in the United States, but in third world countries, uh, therapy, counseling, uh, these kind of uh, things, are, they're not as prominent as they are here. Um, mental health is a struggle everywhere, but uh, but actually having access to counseling is not something that um, is as available um, in those countries. And so we're actually paying, uh, there are five different ladies who work at the resource center. We're actually getting them classes at a college to kind of help them with counseling so that they can help out the communities in that way. As many people know, we also do scholarships. Um, and I know many of you here are sponsoring children. And if you want to sponsor a child, you should, you should get with Nancy about that. Um, because there's several more children who need sponsorship, but uh, we are uh, providing monthly uh, for kids who otherwise could not afford to go to school to be able to go to school. Um, even public school is not free there. Uh, and you have to have some kind of money. It's not a lot, but if your family's, you know, a lot of people, even though minimum wage is around 300, a lot of people aren't even making that because they're working part time. Um, and so we're helping those kids get an education. Um, and then we're also, we're, we're big believers in when, when you go to spread the gospel, you don't give them the news about Jesus to people who are hungry and then leave them there starving. Uh, so we're feeding them as well. And so we put a lot of money into different feeding programs, programs to um, have weekly uh, one meal a week in certain poor communities. So the whole community, whether you're part of the congregations or not, whether, you, you know, whether you're a Christian or not, you come out and you get to eat. And for people who don't necessarily have the luxury of three meals a day, that's a real blessing for them. Um, now, we're also going down to Honduras uh, on uh, June the 26th through July 4th. So you can consider this your last call. If you've, if you've been considering it, uh, you know, this would be the time to make a decision. Uh, obviously, my family's going. Some of the Baileys are going as well. Um, so if, you, if you've given any thought to that, um, you know, please come speak to me. Um, you know, we'd, we'd love to have you go. You hear a lot of rumors, but the part we're going, it's not, it's not dangerous. There's, you're not hearing gunfire or things like that. Uh, we're all taking children. We always do. So it's, it is, it is safe, contrary to popular opinion. And we'd love, uh, if you'd be interested in going, uh, to do so. If you would like to go, maybe you can't go this time. One thing we do every year that we go down is that we actually, um, prepare baskets of food specifically for the people, uh, the, the people who are most poor. Um, and those baskets are about $20 a piece. So if you're not going, but you would like to help out with that, every, every time we go down there, we get with some of the local preachers in the congregations. They identify, you know, people who are pretty much living in, um, you know, terrible poverty. Um, and we kind of raise that money in twenty dollars a piece. We we make these food baskets with essentials, uh, foods, and we give it out to these uh, people. We go and actually pass it out. We take pictures with them. We pray with them and such. So, uh, if you can't make it, but you'd like to give twenty dollars, again, see Nancy about that, and uh, uh, we'd love your sponsorship. Let me just say that Susie and I, when we came here, uh, got on board with sponsoring the children, and so we get emails, um, the the kingdom ministry that goes that it goes through, and we get notes from the kids and and uh, notes of appreciation, and boy, it is, it will lift you up to see that you're making the difference in a in a little child's life, and uh, it's such a blessing to us. So I want to encourage you to be a part of this ministry. I, we certainly have uh, enjoyed it. I want to bring you a communion thought today and out of the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 6, it doesn't say how he gets there, but all of a sudden Isaiah finds himself in heaven's court and he is standing before God. And like any one of us who is standing before God, um, he sees all the angelic beings. He sees the seraphim, the six-winged creatures. He sees God up on his throne. He's in God's divine counsel and all that's around and he screams out oh i'm i'm dead i'm <laughs> you can imagine any of us being in in such a holy place in such a holy presence and feeling so unworthy knowing what we are this is not a place for us and so isaiah falls down doesn't want to look and 
All of a sudden, one of those angelic beings brings over a hot coal from the altar and touches his lips and says, you're clean. Your sins are forgiven. That's something that people at that time was hard to wrap their minds around. How, what a blessing it is to have your sins forgiven and just how easy it is. But that process didn't come about in an easy way. God looked on this earth and saw that there was no suitable sacrifice. And so he himself becomes flesh to endure all the pain and suffering that we deserve. The truth of the matter is, you know, there was forgiveness of sins in the Old Testament. We always, always heard this for many, many years. It's, it's actually I don't agree with, which was our, the sins, you know, what happened to the people before Jesus died? And the scriptures say their sins were forgiven. And we said, yeah, their sins were rolled forward to the cross. Well, it wasn't that their sins were rolled forward to the cross. Their sins were forgiven. But what was rolled forward to the cross, and you see this mentioned in Romans 3, was the punishment for those sins. That was what was deferred, not the forgiveness, because God knew in his time what was going to take place. And we're living in that time to where we can look back at the cross. And not only that, what I think about is when the time comes for us to stand before the throne because of what Jesus did, we don't have to hide in shame. We don't have to hide in, in fear because we've been cleansed just like Isaiah was and our sins are forgiven. Praise God. Let's pray together. Father, it's because of you that we stand here today cleansed in the blood of Christ. It's such a magnificent gift that it's so hard for us to wrap our minds around it because we know that left to ourselves, everyone in this room stands unworthy. And yet because of your desire to be in a relationship with us, you cleanse us and make us whole. We stand before you guiltless because of who you are. And then we see in Isaiah where he goes forward and he, he says, let me be your messenger. Let me tell other people about this incredible God. And I pray, Lord, that it just renews our hearts and minds this, today as we take of this bread and of this cup, that we renew in our hearts to be messengers of the glorious sacrifice and the unending mercy of a God who loves us as much as you. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Merciful God and Father, loving us like no other, hear our prayer, the cry of our hearts, as we come to you. We acknowledge our transgressions, we confess. To you our sins, show us mercy and compassion, touch our lives with your healing grace again, release us from the past as we see
as we seek your face. Wash us free at last. We receive your love. We receive your healing grace. We receive your Cole's making his way up here. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss our kids to their time of worship. We've got a special time of learning and worship for our kids ages three years old to kindergarten. If you don't know where to go, you can just go that way, follow. Why do I not know your name right now? Yell your name loud so I will never forget it. Kayla. See, I almost called you Kelsey. Aren't you glad I didn't? I don't know. Follow that girl. No, she will. T Kayla. I know her, and she's a very good friend of mine. I just forgot her name. For a brief, for a brief, brief moment, she will get your child where they need to go. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. I have so much to say. But, but the, the, the most that I have to say is I love that boy so much. I do. He, I've known him since he was a teenager, and I'm so proud of him, and we are so blessed to have Corey as our worship leader here at Hunter Hills. And we love you. You're not too bad. We could have done worse. <laughs> My name's Carl Carpenter, and I'm in a unique position because... I, I'm, I'm kind of on staff here at Hunter Hills because Hunter Hills pays me, but I don't work in the building. I go into a prison every day. I go into, frankly, work release uh, on a full-time basis. It's a 300-man facility, and the thing about Frank Lee and some of the smaller facilities in the state is the Department of Corrections will not pay for a chaplain in a smaller facilities. In the 1,000-man facilities and the 1,500-man facilities, yes, they will pay for one chaplain in those large facilities, but in the smaller ones, they do not. And so without churches like Hunter Hills, these small facilities, they don't have a chaplain. Or they have someone that goes in whenever they can every so often. The men at Frank Lee, those 300 men, have a full-time chaplain. And they so much love and appreciate this church and this ministry. We're going to show a video, some of what we do um, on, a, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. Um, Ashley Bailey put this together for us and did such a great job. Uh, and this is just a glimpse of what we do. And, and in some of those videos, you'll see Jeff Chapman's ugly mug, because uh, he goes in too, uh, and is very faithful, and the guys just love him to death, as you can imagine. But um, let's, let's watch this video. Okay, while they are working on that, when we get sound, um, just start it when we get sound, and I'll stop mid-sentence. Um, we had a, a great weekend last weekend 
uh, resurrection. We called it Resurrection Weekend. And, um, and so we had a good Friday service at the prison. We had uh, a, a Easter service at the prison. We, we took communion, Good Friday and Easter. And being in prison ministry, I think being in any ministry, we have to be careful not to base what we do on numbers. And it's, it's hard not to do that, but, but, it, but we need to base uh, our ministry on reaching just one. But we had some record numbers last weekend, um, and we had our Good Friday service, and we had 30 men that attended that Good Friday service. And the unique thing about the 30 men that showed up, about 15 of them rarely, if ever, came to church or Bible study. But those 15, and I have to admit, it just really surprised me when I saw them in the service, they, um, they, they were so blessed by being there. And during that service, um, we, it was really quiet. You have to understand, in a correctional facility, no matter how big or small it is, it's just a crazy environment. It is loud, it is boisterous, there's no peace. Um, you smell smoke, drugs, all kinds of things at any given time, and it's just a very rough, difficult environment, especially to be in 24 hours a day. And so we make the chapel a place where it's calm, and, and we don't talk loud in the chapel, and this is really for any time, and it's a time of peace and a time of refuge. But on Good Friday, we spent some time, I got some of those electric candles um, and, and had them up front and we had scripture taped to each of them, and we spent some time in prayer and reading scripture and, uh, and singing some songs. And there were quite a few times when I looked around and I saw some of the fellows doing this because it was so meaningful to them. And so we went on um, from there. We had our service on on Easter morning, a resurrection service. We had a Bible study. We had the service. And we received, Hunter Hills received the best, one of the best compliments that we could ever receive. There you go. Thank you. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure love. Am I more than just the sum of every heart? And every low Remind me once again Just who I am Because I need to know
I watched it like 20 times thinking, okay, now you won't get emotional when you show it at church. <laughs> Last Sunday when we had our service, one, we, have about four, we have four inmate pastors that do the church services and do some Bible studies when I'm not there. KJ gave the introduction, like the welcome and the prayer last Sunday at our resurrection service. And KJ gave this ministry one of the best compliments that we can ever get. Because KJ said, I speak for myself and for everybody here, staff and inmates at Frank Lee, that this ministry and that the chaplain that we have here brings a sense of normalcy to our lives. And some of you may know, but a lot of you don't, the chaos and the upside down world that it is in a correctional facility. And to be responsible for bringing some normalcy into a situation like that glorifies God so much. And one of the things that I talked about during our resurrection service last Sunday is from Mark chapter 16. And in Mark chapter 16, the three women go to the grave and, and they see that the stones rolled away and they see this angel and the angels say, don't look for Jesus here. He is risen. Go and tell everybody. Go tell his disciples. Go and tell them that he is alive, that he is risen. And the Bible says in that particular text in Mark, it says that they trembled in fear and they didn't tell anybody. But the thing is, we know when we go back to Matthew and we read some of the other accounts, the Bible says that they were terrified and scared, and yet in their joy they shared this good news. But they needed a minute. See, these three women, when they, when they saw all this that happened, they, they had a foundation. They had a foundation in who Jesus was. They saw him healing people. They heard him preaching and speaking with authority. They knew somehow in their minds, they knew this was the Messiah. They knew this was the Son of God, but, but they just couldn't grasp exactly what that looked like. And so when it came to fruition and all of a sudden the body isn't there, I just imagine them kind of freezing for a little bit and saying, we, we just need a minute. We just need a minute to process this. Now the foundation was there. They just needed a minute. And then they went with joy and told others. And I looked at JT that was sitting there. And JT reminded me of those three women. Because JT is one of our inmate pastors and he's very strong in the faith. He, he even ministers to staff sometimes. But JT has been incarcerated for about 18 or 19 years and he came up for parole about two weeks ago and he was denied. And the thing about parole is when you're denied, you can be denied and set off to have another hearing in one year, two year, three years, four years, or five years. And they set JT off five years. And he was shaken a little bit and he didn't hide it, but he reminded me so much of those three women I'm, I'm going to need a minute. And he needed a week or so just to be able to put things into perspective. Now, he still attended church. He still attended Bible study. But he just took a step back because he needed a minute. The foundation was there, but his world was turned upside down, and he just needed a minute. And I couldn't help but notice the association between JT and those three women that went to the empty tomb. I have to tell you before we get into the text uh, about Wild Bill. And Wild Bill doesn't like to be called Wild Bill anymore. Wild Bill was called that for about 48 or 49 years. But he's not Wild Bill anymore. His name is Alan. And you better call him Alan or you may see Wild Bill come up. Someone shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with him at another camp, and he just grew and grew in the last two years that he's been a Christian. He got to Frank Lee about uh, six or eight months ago, and I, I can't think of him, remember him missing 
any services or Bible studies. I see Wild Bill, I see Alan every day. Alan loves coffee so much. I think he could take an IV of it and just walk around with a bag. Because whenever there's coffee around, hey, can I have a cup of that? But Alan had a coffee cup, a prized coffee cup that he was allowed. It wasn't contraband. There, there are some in the prisons, but, um, but he had this coffee cup, and it had Wild Bill etched in it. And he tried and tried to get that etching off to cover it up, but it just wouldn't work. And so he took his prized coffee cup, and he smashed it on the ground. Because he's not that person anymore. Because he's changed, because he's free. He's free from the bondage of sin. One of, the, one of the funny things about Alan is every so often after our Bible study, we'll say, Alan, do you have any closing thoughts about that? And he sits there like this and he says, well, well, fellers, this is what I think. And I want to first of all know how a southerner spells fellers. I want to know that. But, but he has wisdom. And one of the things I remember about Alan early on is he came to Bible study and he had the front part of his glasses, but he had a shoestring that was tied around the sides of his glasses and he tied it in a bow in the back. And he didn't have a Bible, so he used a borrowed Bible from one of our bookshelves there. We were able to help him to get a new pair of glasses and a, and a new study Bible that he loves. And he said, can I write a thank you note to Hunter Hills? And I said, no, you can't. They won't appreciate it at all. <laughs> Keep your words to yourself, Alan. Lord, this is him writing. Lord, I believe you have everything I need and you want to bless me. You tell me in your word that you will open the heavens to bless the work that I do. I know that without you, I can do nothing. I ask that you will open the heavens and pour out your blessing and power over the Hunter Hills prison ministry. And also, Father, give my work and my efforts. I give my whole work and my effort to you and ask you for favor and blessing in anything my hands touch. Thank you, Hunter Hills family, for my glasses and for my Bible. May it be for your glory alone so that others may see your power and your goodness at work. Many thanks. With the utmost respect, Alan. I hope you get to meet Alan one day. I hope you get to meet JT one day and KJ one day. Our scripture of this morning is Luke chapter 4. I feel like I could stop right now, but there is power in God's word. And there's freedom in God's word. And this is why I go into the prison. Because I teach it and I preach it and I share it on a one-on-one -on -one basis and in a group setting because this is life-changing. There is freedom in God's word. And so if you're in your Bibles, if you're there at Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 14, Luke chapter 4, verse 14, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up and read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. When we read God's word, I don't want us to make a mistake. I don't want for us to make the mistake of, wow, this person really needs to hear this. That person really needs this. I need to share this with this person. They really need that. The first thing we have to do is look in the mirror and say, Carl, you need this. We may look at those who are incarcerated and say, wow, they've done a lot of bad things. Haven't we done a lot of bad things? Those who are incarcerated have, are there for most of them for a reason. You know, a fair amount of them are guilty. And we, we look at them and we say, wow, I, I, we may even be tempted to say, I hope that they're locked up the rest of their lives. But we have to understand that we need as much freedom as those who are incarcerated. We need as much freedom as the worst person that's walking this earth right now. We all need that freedom and that forgiveness and that mercy that comes through the blood of Jesus. And so if Jesus is talking to the people here, he, he quotes from Isaiah 61. He says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. We are poor without Jesus Christ. Those who are lost are poor without the good news. Those who are incarcerated are poor, and those of us in the free world are poor. We can have a million dollars in the bank, but we are dirt floor poor if we don't know the good news of Jesus Christ and accept him as our Lord and Savior. And so Jesus reminds us. And as Jesus shares this from Isaiah 61, a little bit of background on it is, is Isaiah is talking about a year of jubilee. See, the, the Jewish people experience the, the year of Jubilee every 50 years. And once every 50 years, all debts of, of the people were canceled. Every 50 years, all land was returned to the original owners. Every 50 years, slaves were set free. Everybody was given a fresh and a new beginning. And what Jesus Christ is telling us and the world today, what he was telling the people back then, is this is the year of Jubilee, and it lasts more than a year. It lasts for eternity. What good news is that? That is awesome, awesome news. That's news to shout from the mountaintops. And so he starts this good news that it's for the poor, and we are poor without Jesus. He goes on to say what the, the part that gets me the most is, he says in the middle of verse 18, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. We are prisoners. We don't have to be behind chain link and razor wire to be a prisoner. I had one man say to me, and he, at that point, he did about 23 or 24 years, and he said, in my relationship with God and since I've been saved, I realize that freedom doesn't depend on which side of the fence I'm on. Can you imagine that? Being in a maximum security prison and saying, I'm a free man by the blood of Jesus. And we, too, have this same type of freedom. And God allows, through his son Jesus, that we are able to see, that we're able to see clearly. And one of the things that I stress to the men that are behind the fences, and I, and I try to stress to myself and remind myself, is, is this, um, that God allows us to see clearly. He, he gives sight to the blind. And I want us to see ourselves as God sees us. God, let me not be blinded by that. Let me see myself the way you see me. And so, that may be convicting because there may be unconfessed sin in our lives. But when I see God lifting the blinders from our eyes, 
and he allows us to see ourselves as he sees us, he looks upon us with unconditional love. When God looks at us, he says, that's my workmanship. I created her. I created him. When God looks at us, he knows that we are overcomers. When God looks at us, he, he loves us so much, he says, you know what, it's not because of anything that you did, but I want to spend eternity with you. And I pray that God lifts the blinders from all of us and allows us to see clearly the way that he sees us. And Jesus came so that we can see ourselves the way that God sees us. And then Jesus goes on and says that he had... Give, he gives recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When we experience this freedom, when the blinders are, are lifted off of our eyes, when we hear that good news and we are no longer poor, we realize what God's favor really is, what God's grace, what God's love, what God's mercy, what God's forgiveness is really about. And it's a time of rejoicing. And that rejoicing and freedom lasts more than a year, like the year of Jubilee did. It lasts for our lifetime here and well into eternity. So I'd like to encourage us as we look at texts like this and we think about people who are those who are incarcerated, those who are living very ungodly lives. We have to look in the mirror and say, am I any better than that? Is my sin any cleaner or, or less offensive to God than that? And the answer to that is no. Because in the eyes of God, it doesn't matter if we're incarcerated or free. It doesn't matter if we're rich or poor. What matters is he loves us and he gave his one and only son for us. I want to ask now for the, the praise team to come up and, um, and we're going to have a word of prayer. I'm going to ask you, if you can, to stand up. We're going to all pray together. But in light of this text, there's a lot of things to pray for. And as I look out at everybody here, I know there's some hurt and there's some pain and there's some struggling and there's some woundedness, but there's freedom. There's freedom from the bondage of guilt. Some of us, some of us here feel really guilty over things that we've done in the past. And through Jesus Christ, that guilt is forgiven. And we don't have to carry that around anymore. We can walk around as free men and women because we are free from the bondage of sin and we are free from the debt of sin. We are free from death. We don't have to be afraid to die because when Jesus, when Jesus died and he rose again, he took away the sting of death. And yet... We live in this world and we live in the flesh and we struggle. Some of us struggle silently. Some of us have secret sin, but God knows it all. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we, we pray for each other right now. Because Father, we all need freedom from the bondage of sin. We all sin and fall short of your glory. And yet, Father, we are so grateful to you that you paid the price for our sin with the blood of your Son. And God, according to the text that we read, some of us are blinded right now. We are blinded by how much you love us. We are blinded by the things of this world. We are blinded and we don't see clearly some of the things that are going on in our lives. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will take away those blinders, 
and that we will be able to see clearly. We are so grateful to you that we are not poor anymore, but that we are rich. We thank you, God, that we don't have to fear death anymore because your son took away that sting of death. Father, we are so grateful to you that we are free from the bondage of sin and guilt and shame. And God, help us to live and to walk abundantly. Let nothing weigh us down, Father, because this is not a year of jubilee. It's a lifetime, an eternity of jubilee. Because you have grace for us and love for us and forgiveness for us. God, thank you for your son. Thank you, Father, for hope. And may our eyes always be open, Father, in ways that we can share the love that you have for us, that we can share that love with others. Father, I, I thank you so much for this church, for how they support and how they love those who are in prison and those who are hurting and those who are young and, and the so many ministries that this church supports. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to be a part of you shining. Father, thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for this day, God. Thank you that we were able to remember Jesus in communion. Thank you, Father, that we were able to sing, whether it sounds good or not. We were able to sing praises to you because you are worthy. We love you, Father. And we thank you for your love for us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, Yes, our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done. Knowing every victory was your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say. Yes, our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. joy our hearts can say, yes our hearts can say, never once did we ever walk alone, never once did you leave us on our own, you are faithful, God you are faithful, evermore we are breathing your grace and evermore we'll be breathing out your praise you are faithful God you are faithful you are faithful God you are faithful standing on this mountain top looking just how far we've come knowing that for every step you were with us. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? 
I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. I am chosen. Not forsaken, I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child As we conclude our time of worship, we're going to say our benediction. And it's a passage of scripture that talks about us being a, a chosen people. But as we say this, we're not selfishly saying it just about the people here in this room. We're saying it about all believers all over the world. Persons in Honduras, our brothers and sisters behind walls. So do we have it? There it is. I couldn't see it behind us there. <laughs> so let's say our benediction together. And as we do this, think about all believers everywhere. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who belongs to God, that we may declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once we were not a people, but now we are God's people. Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy.